so good to have you join us at this Christmas Day here in Korea. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. We have a lot on our plate today, so let's get started with the day's highlights. It has been a hard year for the tourism sector here in Korea, first hard hit by the MERS outbreak, only to now face warmer than usual temperatures that are threatening winter tourism. What topped the headlines in global business news in 2015? From the world's second largest economy, China's slowing growth, to Volkswagen's shocking emission scandal. We take a look at stories that shook the global business world this year. With the year coming to an end, we look at some of the new technologies that broke into the market, making headlines this year. Most of them, of course, adding just a little more convenience to our lives. Our Shin Zemin has the highlights. Formerly known as a low-end iPhone copycat, China's Xiaomi is now better known for its range of tablets, wearables, and smart home products, as well as a new self-balancing electric scooter launched with Segway. It's topping holiday wish list at just 315 U.S. dollars. Be it curvy, lean or widescreen, a number of smartphones leapt onto the market this year, including a couple from a pair of old rivals. Samsung Electronics had its Galaxy S6 Edge with a curved screen that wraps around the sides of the handset. Apple rolled out an upgrade to the iPhone 6, the 6S and 6S Plus, featuring the sharpest display and the biggest 5.5-inch screen yet. Korea's mobile messaging service, KakaoTalk, grew into a behemoth this year after its merger with Down Communications, Korea's second-largest portal. The merger set the new company called Down Kakao, but soon it lopped Down off its corporate name. Kakao went on to become an all-in-one social networking service, launching multiple services for shopping, media and payments, in addition to a popular Uber-like taxi service. Fintech got a bit savvier and a bit more popular this year. Mobile payment apps by Apple and Samsung let users pay for items on the go with just a tap, then the payment is done. And with Korea handing out licenses for the country's first internet-only banks in October, financial services will be offered online without brick-and-mortar locations for the first time. Drones came a little further into our daily lives. Some were for work, with online retail giant Amazon unveiling a new hybrid delivery drone that acts like a helicopter. While others were for play, like these new virtual reality handsets, some of which allow users to control and capture the VR imagery. Shin Semin, Business Daily. Due to the relatively warm temperatures we've been having lately, Korea's winter tourism industry is experiencing a bit of chill. But the government and other organizations are working to fire things back up. Our Park Se-young has the story. Like many people from colder climates, a good number of Koreans also want to go somewhere warm over the winter break. But their Southeast Asian neighbors probably have a different idea of winter fun. That it's hot all year round in Singapore, but then in here, you get to experience different weathers, you get to experience different climates, and I really, really like it here. So I've tried before snowboarding and skiing, and it's really fun. For many people from warmer neighboring countries, winter in Korea has been an attraction. But with temperatures rising around the globe, including Korea, the country's winter tourism industry is experiencing a freeze that could be difficult to crack. The warming trend has put a damper on the enthusiasm for winter festivals and the number of visitors to ski resorts slid by over 20% last season compared to five seasons ago. The number of foreign tourists visiting in winter has declined as well. To try and reverse the trend, the Korean government and private organizations are stepping up efforts to revive the nation's winter tourism industry. They're offering discounts for ski vacations with the hope they can keep the snow on the ground, entertainment packages, and a variety of other activities. Many visitors to Korea tend to like K-pop, so we've prepared various events for them this year. Experts say the winter tourism campaign is likely to continue in the coming years as it will be difficult for the tourism industry to regain its momentum if temperatures continue to rise. Park Se-young, Business Daily.
conscious are you about your carbon footprint when you go about your daily life? While the government may have its eyes set on cutting greenhouse gases by 37 percent over the next 15 years, Koreans are set to be in the leading ranks when it comes to CO2 emissions. Here's our Lee Ju Young with more. In light of Korea's pledge to drastically reduce the country's carbon emissions by 2030, there's been fervent movement on the macro level to draw up measures that will lead to greener growth. And in line with this vision, Korea Climate and Environment Network, which brings the public and private sectors together, has unveiled the carbon footprints of Koreans on the micro level to see what can be done to cut down on consumption on a day-to-day -day basis. A four-person household vents out an average 103 kilograms worth of CO2 monthly. That would take around 37 pine trees to offset the damage. Also, 163 pine trees would be needed to counterbalance the 450 kilograms of carbon emissions that a car would spew out from roughly $340 worth of gasoline. Instead, the use of public transportation like the bus or subway can significantly reduce people's carbon footprint. As one of the top 10 emitters of carbon dioxide in the world, Korea's per capita emissions are at 12.3 tons, which is nearly twice that of the European Union. Experts say it's becoming more important than ever to adopt measures like increasing the use of public transportation, saving electricity and reducing waste, all simple measures that will add up and create a more environment-friendly society. Lee ju -young, Business Daily. Well, it's Friday, the last one of 2015. And on that note, we have our Eunice Kim back in the studio for one last time this year for a wrap-up of some of the biggest global stories of the year. Hello, Eunice. Merry Christmas, Jean. Merry Christmas, Eunice. All right, so many things happened this year, from the U.S. Fed rate hike to the plummeting price of oil yeah. and, of course, the Volkswagen scandal. Yeah. But I'm sure that what shook up the global economy the most this year was China, right? Yeah, it certainly seemed like it, right? It seemed like we had a global uh, major China news every week, especially in the second uh, half of this year, um, sparked by the summer stock plummet. All eyes were transfixed on the Middle Kingdom's slowing growth and its impact on the global community. It was stunning enough to presumably push back what was to be a headline event of 2015. The U.S. Central Bank postponed reining in its monetary easing program in September, its meeting minutes showing concerns over growing China risks that could spill over to depress the U.S. economy. And it was a spectacular summer ride indeed. In the last full week of trading in August, China's Shanghai Composite had erased all the gains it made in the first half of the year, peaking in June, at which point the bourse had doubled in value over the previous year. The stock route reverberated throughout global markets, depressing stocks and regional currencies, as the Chinese government announced a pivot towards market-driven economic goals and a new normal of slower growth. That growth was forecast to come in at 6.8 percent next year, according to a paper published by the People's Bank of China last week. The yuan, following its successful inclusion into the IMF's SDR basket, was allowed to drop quite significantly to reflect market conditions. But ahead of all that, off to the west, Europe was on edge with a Greek debt crisis and a referendum amid the region's fragile economic improvement, both of which likely contributed to the highest volume of online searches on the euro-dollar exchange rate seen to date, this according to Google. Also part of the battering year were Islamist terror strikes, Russia's aggression over Ukraine, and the largest movement of refugees since World War II. According to EU's Eurostat estimates, more than 980,000 people have moved into Europe this year alone, though it's still unclear how many of them are claiming asylum. German Chancellor Angela Merkel was recognized as Time magazine's Person of the Year in 2015, 
in part for her leadership on the need to accept refugees, fleeing from a protracted civil war in Syria, as well as poverty and violence elsewhere. But the work is far from over, as countries count their costs, not only to state coffers, but also to the shifting makeup of their communities. Wow, what a year has it been indeed. Mm. Thanks for going over all that in your package. But let's go back to the China story. The Chinese economy has, of course, a lot of tie-ins with other Asian economies. And market watchers are saying that they expect Asian currencies to fall even further in the new year. Yeah, you're right. And the outlook for the Korean won doesn't look so hot either. Uh, according to data by Bloomberg, all 10 Asian currencies are set to see their return slump in 2016 against the U.S. dollar. This for the third year in a row. Let's go ahead and take a look at those figures. Strategists see the Chinese yuan or renminbi declining by slightly over 3% next year, while the currencies to see the deepest depreciation are the Korean won and the Indonesian rupiah. The biggest reason here is that Korea is still an export-driven country, and as we've said before, as much as a third of its exports are China-bound. Meanwhile, the Indonesian rupiah is viewed as having a high capital flight vulnerability amid a shrinking foreign exchange reserve. And, of course, the U.S. Fed is now on course to gradually tighten its monetary policy and raise interest rates. So that's the outlook for Asia, but it was also the, quite the down year for Europe mm. as well, with the ongoing events like the refugee crisis expected to bleed into next year. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, this is a, a matter of fact that has not been resolved at all this year, with EU leaders at a summit this month unable to see eye to eye on how it will deal with the historic number of refugees flowing in. Germany's foreign minister recently issued a warning against Slovakia and Hungary that there could be legal action to bear if they don't fulfill their refugee quota. But another factor that also bears over the bloc's head is geopolitics. Namely, Great Britain is facing the question of whether it will stay or leave the European Union. British Prime Minister David Cameron recently hinted there would be a referendum, a campaign promise of the Conservatives, held as early as summer of next year. Should the UK opt out of the EU? Well, with Europe's second largest economy and a major military power out of the mix, that would be the start of redefining an entirely new European bloc, European Union bloc, not to mention a big blow to the EU's global standing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll leave regional economics there, but let's turn over to some company news. Mm. Like I said before, the Volkswagen scandal. Right, absolutely. Uh, Volkswagen, which was competing with Toyota to become the biggest automaker by sales volume, dropped from grace when it was discovered back in September that it had been cheating on its diesel emissions tests. Here's a review. Faced with the fallout from its Dieselgate scandal, Volkswagen is cutting costs. Europe's largest automaker will shrink the number of models and options it offers under the Volkswagen brand, lower executive bonuses, introduce a new corporate structure next year, and sell its private Airbus, all part of $2 billion in cost-cutting, according to reports. In September, Volkswagen admitted to installing so-called defeat devices in 11 million vehicles worldwide to pass stringent pollution tests, diffusing much higher levels of toxic nitrogen oxides into the air. Volkswagen Group executives say the weeks following has been without precedence. Through it, we have lost trust with our clients, with investors and with our employees, but also in politics and among the public. Winning back trust is our top priority and our top challenge. Meanwhile, drivers of gasoline vehicles have been enjoying an extra savings at the pump, as crude oil continues its plummet. As of Friday last week, oil had hit a fresh seven-year low, dropping below $35 a barrel, as stockpiles and production show no signs of slowing, neither in OPEC countries nor in the U.S. 
As with oil tankers creating a traffic jam off the coastline, the required rebalancing in the global oil market won't be helped by OPEC's non-decision on ditching a production cap and the U.S. Congress decision last week to dump a 40-year-old ban on U.S. oil exports. Well, I think we certainly saw a lot of market volatility as well, particularly because of these dropping oil prices, especially at the end of this year, right? Mm -hmm. Well, will oil prices remain at such extremely abnormal levels? I mean, what are we anticipating for the new year now? Well, in the big picture, we are not expecting uh, $100 a barrel levels anytime soon. In fact, uh, it'll be a while before prices rebound back to more acceptable levels, according to experts. Goldman Sachs is forecasting that crude oil prices may have to plunge as low as something around $20 a barrel to force a turnaround in the oil production glut the world is seeing right now. French Bank Society General projects it won't be until the second half of next year before oil returns to the $50 a barrel range at $51 a barrel in the third quarter and just $5 more in the fourth quarter of 2016 June. All right, we'll definitely keep an eye on that in the new year along with other things that you went over with us today. And enjoy cheaper oil prices while we have it, right? Yes, I agree with that. Thank you so much for coming in today, Eunice. You bet. And that wraps it up for today and this week. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back with more next week, so don't forget to tune in then. Have a very Merry Christmas, everyone.